Habiba Malik from India. Can you list the name of reliable scholars who you turn to for fic issues so that we also turn to them for our fic issues? This is a very big question. The answer can go on for us together. I will try and answer in short because which scholars do I turn to for my fic issues? You know, scholars are divided into classical scholars, the medieval scholars, the contemporary, the pre-modern, the modern, you know. As far as the beloved Prophet said, we look our Sharia is based on the Quran and Sayyid Hadith, on Allah and the guidance of the Prophet. And a Prophet said, the best generation is my generation, then the next generation, then the next generation. So after the Prophet, the best are the Sahabas. Then are the Tabain, then are the Tabi Tabain. So when you look for any Dalil, Number one is Quran, then the life of the Prophet. After that is the Sahaba, then Tabain, then Tabain, Tabain. So, but naturally, the best scholars for fiqh is other Sahaba. Hulfa Rashidi, the Sahaba. Then would be Tabain, then would be Tabi Tabain. So, when you look at what, what was their opinion, when they, and there were differences in opinion among the Sahabas. And then we see the Sahaba, then we see which some Sahabas were specialized more in the Quran, some in other aspects, some, some in Mirat, different, different. So based on that, number one are the Sahabas, Khulfa Rashidin, the Sahabas. After Allah and the Rasul, with the Khulfa Rashidin, then would be the Sahabas. Then Tabain, Tabai, Tabain. Then you have the classical scholars that are there. Uh, you have the four Imams, the Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik, Imam Shafi, Imam Hanbal, Ahmad ibn Hanbal. May Allah have mercy on all of them. There were many Imams, 50, hundreds of Imams were there at that time. But these four, they were, their students, mashallah, were, were, were able to spread the teachings more. These four were the top Imams. There were other top Imams also, but maybe the student didn't prom promote the teaching so much. So these were the top four Imams that we have. And all of them, mashallah, we I love them, I respect them, I refer to them. Then, then we have the Muhaddisin. Imam Zabud ibn Hanbal was a Muhaddis, Imam Malik was there. But then we have you know, Imam, Imam Bukhari, we have Imam Muslim, then, then Abu Dawud, then Tirmidhi, then Nasai, Ibn Majah, all these, they were scholars. And I look up to them and then I check. Then we have the Mufassiri, Ibn Qasir, then we have Tabari, then we have Qurtubi and the list is long. Therefore, I said the answer is very, can't give a short answer. So the, then we have the classical, then we have Sahaba, then the classical scholars we have, their level is different. Then we have Ibn Hajar, who, who wrote the Shara of the Bukhari. Many, then we have the many, I mean, you can keep on naming, but these, these are the ones that I can recollect now. Then we, then we have the medieval scholars, you know, a few centuries later, then we have Ibn Taymiyyah. Oh, earlier we, uh, uh, then we have Imam an -Nawi. Then we have, after a few hundred years, uh, we have Ibn Taymiyyah, mashallah, a great scholar. Then uh, Imam uh, Ibn Jawzi, several. Then coming down the line, we have the recent scholars. You call them contemporary scholars, or you call them the modern scholars. I have divided this into two levels, in two parts. One, which were a few decades earlier and are not living any longer, and one which are living. In between, there are many other scholars I did not name, but what I could recollect. In those scholars, in the recent few decades, but are not living, I would, the really that I appreciate and I all look forward is the uh, is the Sheikh Ibn Uthaymi, the Sheikh Nasr al Albani, Sheikh Bin Baz, and unfortunately, these three great scholars of our time, you know, when, I mean, the when we started doing Dawa earlier, they they expired within a few years, a span of a few years, in the late 90s or the early 2000s. And after that, at that time, that I believe one of the best scholars living that time was Abdullah ibn Jibreel, Sheikh Abdullah ibn Jibreel. Again, he's from Riyadh and I met him several times and whenever I had any problems, I have to go to him and look forward to his reply. At that time, he was one of the best living scholars. And Allah also lifted him, mashallah. And may Allah grant Jannah to all these scholars who I have mentioned. 
uh, may Allah's mercy be on all of them. Rahimullah. Now that we have among the scholars, truly, really, frankly, now we have very few handful of scholars who we can really call them scholars. Scholars are many, but we really can, you know, the the level of uh, level of fiqh and the level of intelligence and the way to reply and to analyze. According to me, one of the best scholars today living, or two best scholars, one would be Sheikh Muhammad Hassan Addadu. He's from Mauritania, but since the past few years he's living in Turkey, in Istanbul, and I've been meeting him for several years. Alhamdulillah, the last time I met him was at the KL summit, and before that when I was in Turkey, he is one of the best living Islamic scholars in the world, as well as Sheikh Abdul Aziz Atrefi. And the other one that I can think of and I can name is Sheikh Muhammad Salim Manajid. And all these scholars every year, mashallah, I meet them many times for the last several years I've been meeting them. Except, you know, now some of them are in custody. So since the last couple of years that they have been custody, I could not meet some of them. So these that I can think of today are the top scholars and who I refer to. But you have to realize that there are different specialities. For example, there is a speciality of Islamic finance. In Islamic finance previously, I know, I used to discuss with Dr. Umar Chapra. He's an Indian, then became a Saudi. And Dr. Siddiqui, he's from India again. And they were very well learned in Islamic finance. And the one that I gained the maximum knowledge as far as Islamic finance is concerned is, is Dr. Hamid Hassan. He's an Egyptian, he's yet alive, but very old, man like him health. And later on, he spent many years in Pakistan, and he was the founder of the Islamic University in Islamabad in Pakistan. And he was the one who made the university, he was the rector for many years, I think he spent 19 years there, if I'm not mistaken. Then he shifted to Dubai, and he is, mashallah, according to me, the father of Islamic banking. He was the chairman of more than 20 Islamic banks. He has converted many conventional banks to Islamic bank. And the maximum knowledge that I gained when I sat with him for us together, we also invited him to Bombay uh, for the Islamic Peace Conference, I think in 2007 or 2009, I don't remember. So in terms of Islamic finance knowledge, one of the large, one of the best scholars today living is Dr. Hamid Hussain Hassan. And the other one is Mufti Takwis Mani. MashaAllah, Maulana Mufti Takwis Mani is also a great scholar. These two scholars are one of the highest in the field of Islamic finance. He's from Pakistan and I met him a couple of times when he came to Malaysia. MashaAllah, he has great knowledge. And what we find that in finance, the Hanafi fuqaha, the Hanafi scholars have done more advanced research on Islamic finance as compared to others. So each one has its speciality. So in finance, but natural, I would believe more in Mufti Taqi Usmani or Dr. Amid Hussain Hassan than Sheikh Dadu because that is their speciality. Each field, like in Loga, according to me, one of the best person, according to me, is Dr. Fahab Darheem. Dr. Fahab Darheem, originally an Indian, then shifted to Saudi Arabia, and he was the head of the Loga department in the starting when Loga department for non-Arab started in the Islamic University of Medina. And when I tried to find which is the best teacher I can learn with, I, someone told me it is Fahab Darheem. I said, how will this person give me time? So I went there. And I was shocked. He said, you know, I was there. The lecture you gave a few weeks back in Medina, I was there on the sitting in the first row. So, mashallah, he agreed to give me five hours every day. And we were supposed to spend six months. So, that's the time I took out my Akama, my, my, my Saudi resident permit, in the year 1997. And unfortunately, I could spend hardly about three, three and a half weeks with him. There was an important issue in India. I had to go back. So, for three weeks, mashallah, I sat with him five hours a day, immediately after the Zohar Salah, up to the end of Maghrib, uh, just before Maghrib, spent about four five hours every day. And there I learned he was one of my first few teachers, mashallah. And the knowledge he has, he has, he knows about 70 to 20 languages. The fluency he has, mashallah. And then the other person I studied who's also great in the hadith is uh, Dr. Ziaur Rahman Azmi. Dr. Ziaur Rahman Azmi again is an Indian. You'll be shocked to know he was a Hindu. Then he migrated to Saudi Arabia. He did his master's, he did bachelor's, master's, PhD, he became the head, he became the dean of the Hadith department in Islamic University of Medina. 
And I used to sit with him twice a week. And my basis of hadith, uh, I learned from him, mashallah. He's a great scholar. And he has compiled after he retired in the past, he spent about nine, 18 years in compiling all the Sahih Hadith in one volume. And that was my desire when I used to speak in lecture after the Quran and Sahih Hadith. Now, where is the Sahih Hadith? Your Bukhari, Muslim, but that's not all. So, what he did, he spent about 15 to 20 years and compiled all the Sahih Hadith in one volume and called it Jame Kamil. And that's, in, that's printed in 12 volumes. There's a Muqtasar version of it, which is in five volumes, and we are translating it into English. And you know, when I say Quran, it's not all, even if not 100%, you can easily claim that more than 95% of the Sahih Hadith are there. And then this Hadith is also then Bukhari, chapter number so and so, all number so and so, also then Muslim, also then Abu Dawud. So all the Sahih Hadith you can find in that. He's, so there are other scholars in the field of science, is there, like Dr. Musleh, he specialized in science. Then you have Abdul Majid Hassan Nani in science. So there are very, in terms of fiqh issues, as I told you, that there are many scholars, there are other scholars also. There are there many, like uh, Sheikh. Uh, Saad Nasr he is also a great scholar. But the one that I really appreciate amongst all of them is Sheikh Muhammad Hassan of Dadu, Sheikh Abdullah the Tarifi, and, and uh, Sheikh Muhammad Saleh al Munajid. And what Sheikh Muhammad Saleh al Munajid has done, that mashallah, he has his own, own website, Islam Kwene, which is the most popular Islamic website in the world and most popular site in Fafal. If you have any questions, the best answer you can get is go to Islam q &A. It's in 14 languages. Hope this answer is in short. It's a very short answer. You can elaborate for us together on this.